Hi everyone and welcome to another project that we've completed in Whitfield this time. You can see behind me we've got some solar, we've also got battery storage system on this. We've installed some new solar to complement the existing solar. So it should be a really interesting one this of how an existing system integrates with a new solar PV system and a battery storage system. So there's a lot going on and I'm going to take you through it. So let's start with the solar. This property before we arrived already had 16 250 watt panels. That is around about four kilowatt. So it's actually four kilowatt bang on. With that, they've got a 3.68 kilowatt solar PV inverter in the loft. So that was the existing system, fit registered, everything like that. So that was ticking away nicely, charging the customer's electric vehicle, air source heat pump, things like that. However, as this house has developed, the electricity consumption has risen, like it will do for all of us. We're all looking at electric vehicles, air source heat pumps, most of our cooking now is all done through electric appliances like electric hobs, electric ovens, and that just means one thing, we need to buy more electricity. What's the solution to that is that, okay, let's generate our own. And so, like I've mentioned, this house already had solar, but now that that electricity consumption has gone up year on year, is thinking, well, I've got a big roof, why don't I put more solar on it? There's a little bit of a misconception out there that um, you can't add another system when you've already got one that's fit registered. So for those of you that don't know what a fit registration is, back in the heydays of solar when you used to see solar panels popping up all over the place, the government paid you to generate power. And that's exactly what's going on here. So whatever this customer generates, he gets paid, whatever he's generating directly from the government. Whether or not he's using it or exporting it, it doesn't matter, he gets the same amount. The misconception is that you can't have any other system. You absolutely can. You can't mess around too much with the system that's already installed, but we can put a new system in. And so that's exactly what we've done here. So the 16 panel that the customer's already got, so the four kilowatt of DC that's installed is unchanged, that's as it was. We've installed 15 385 watt panels on this job and they're Trina All Blacks. That equates to 5,775 watts of installed DC. So we've more than doubled this system. That all feeds back to an alpha battery, which we're gonna show you in a minute. So as I mentioned, he's got some 250 watt panels. We've installed some 385 watt panels and they are even the biggest output ones that we can get hold of now. That just shows you over the space of eight years or so when this system was originally installed, how far the technology has come and it's growing. It's continually growing. The output panels is going up the size of panels is coming down towards their output. So a 500 watt panel isn't double the size of that panel. It's bigger, but it's not double the size of the old existing panel. So technology is growing and it's such an exciting space. But anyway, let's take a look at the system. So we're in this room and this is like an electrician's paradise in here. We've got the main electricity meter, we've got a big distribution board, we've got internet. This is the best room. Um, and I wish every house had this sort of setup, but yeah, sometimes we're under stairs, sometimes we're in a nice big boiler slash plant room, which is great. But yeah, so this is where we've got our battery system, all of our control system isolators, and, and this is where the, the solar PV cables come back to. It's also where the existing solar PV AC cabling comes back to to obviously connect into the into the system. So his existing solar PV inverter is up in the loft, but we don't need to do anything with that. We can monitor what that is generating from inside this room. So we do that through CT clamps, which I'll explain a little bit more and exactly how that works in a minute. I'm gonna leave the start of the shower with this for a minute. We're gonna talk about all the other components because there's a lot more that goes into this than just plunking a, a metal box in a room and expecting it just to all to work. So with that, I'll take you through our isolators and our consumer unit right now. Here we've got our Luden 10-way distribution board. So if I lift the lid on that, we've got our 32 amp RCBO. We've then got a six amp RCBO, and then we've got these two power meters. So those two power meters play an absolutely critical job 
when it comes to this battery system working. So this first power meter, that is there to monitor the grid. So that is telling the battery what has been imported or exported or if nothing's happening. The second one, the PV power meter, that is monitoring what the old existing solar is generating. And that's also key because if we don't know what the old system is generating, it can't be added to what the new system is generating. So on the customer's dashboard, all he'll see is a total amount that the solar is generating. That is his existing solar and his new solar. So he doesn't have to go, oh, okay, well, if I add that to that, it equals that, so that's how much I'm generating. It's all in one figure, so it's nice and easy. My house in total is generating X amount of power. So it keeps things nice and simple. That's only possible because of a little CT clamp that goes around the main incoming supply. So I'll tell you what, I'll show you that next. So this is the grid CT clamp. So you can see here, it's round the main incoming supply into the property out of the main switch, comes round and supplies some Henley blocks. But this is the line tail. So this is monitoring what power is going in or out of this property in total. There's another one of these on the solar PV circuit doing exactly the same job, but monitoring how much the solar is producing. And that feeds to that solar PV meter that's in that Luden board. Once we've come out of this consumer unit, we then go through an isolator, an AC isolator and a generation meter. Out of that generation meter, it then goes into the battery. But the reason that we have those isolators is because if we need to work on this system or it needs to be isolated for whatever reason, we've got that local isolation there that can be locked off and left in a, an off position and in a safe position if you know this battery started to trip the power or anything like that. Luckily that hardly ever happens, so we don't need to worry about that too much as long as we've got the facility there to lock it off and make it safe if it needed to be. A bit like any uh, electrical installation really. So I'll show you this isolator first. So we've got the solar and battery AC isolator. So this here comes out of this distribution board into this isolator and then into this little meter here. So this little meter is monitoring everything that the solar is producing. So that means that after a year, two years, three years, we have a physical meter that has shown us how much the solar has produced. It will show you that on the online dashboard, but um, it's an MCS requirement to have that meter in place anyway. So that's why we fit it. After we've gone through the AC side, which is basically everything that I've just shown you, the AC isolator, the meter, and then into the battery, we look at the DC side. So that is from our 15 panels that we've installed. So that cabling comes down in two strings. We have a string of eight and a string of seven to make the 15 panels. It doesn't matter that they're slightly unbalanced because the battery has what's called two trackers. So that means that the string of eight goes onto one tracker, the string of seven goes onto the other, and that tracker tracks the voltage of that string of eight. So if you had a system where the panels were on two different roofs, then say an east and a west face, you'd have one set of panels and one string, another set of panels on the other. And that tracker would then track the voltage of that string. And as the sun goes over, obviously the east will get the sun in the morning, the west in the evening. And it'll mean that the east set of panels may turn off uh, or reduce massively in their output come you know, at 11, 12, one o'clock. But the west ones are only just starting to generate. So having a dual tracker within this battery system is really handy because it means we're not too worried about putting the panels on different orientations or different pitches. But because all this is on one pitch, one roof, we've we split it over two trackers and two strings just because that's what the facility in this battery has, and that's what works. So we've got, for each set of panels, we've got a DC isolator here. So this is for the string of eight, and then we've got a second one here for the string of seven. So that means that if we had a, a problem on one of the sets of panels, we can isolate it just by going like that. That'll isolate effectively half of the panels, there or thereabouts. Then to turn it back on, all we need to do is that. And then that will now put that amount of power back into the battery from that set of panels. But the reason that that's important, a bit like the AC isolator, is that we can lock the isolator off. If that set of panels is causing the battery to go into a fault, then we can isolate this troublesome string and let it work just on half power and let it actually generate power and store and, and actually be working. So it's important to have those two isolators. The other thing that we install that we get probably far more attention for than, than we should do really is a document holder. 
As simple as it sounds, we nine times out of 10 install a document holder. And that is just for the manuals, the uh, system schematics, the start stop procedures, just because we've all been there we've bought a newer piece of equipment and you, you just end up throwing the manual away or whatever away come two years down the line you need it it's gone so we like to fit a little document holder to our systems so that all the documents can go in there so that when we need them or the customer needs them that they're ready to be looked at and used when they're needed okay so that's enough chat about consumer units isolators generation meters all of that we want to see the battery and this is it we've got the battery just here First of all, it's a really nice, sleek looking battery. It's only very narrow, about 250 mil off the wall. So that, that really helps with uh, space because quite a lot of the time in garages and utilities, we've got the wall space, but it's quite tight. Either there's a doorway or a bin that needs to be pulled out or anything like that. We've normally not got much floor space, but we have got enough wall space. So systems like this that are only very narrow really help to make it easy to find locations for this type of equipment. So I'll run through what we can see on this battery and what each bit is showing us. So we can see here this little dongle sticking up. So each system comes with a Wi-Fi dongle. This one isn't actually used on this system just because we've uh, hardwired the internet into this but it's there if for whatever reason the internet position gets changed or a Wi-Fi connection is more desirable. It's there ready, it's not being used at the minute. We then move down the battery itself. So we've got the, the screen of the battery with all the menu buttons and selection buttons here. And we've got a series of LEDs, which we'll have a look at that in a minute. If we then move a little bit further down the battery, we've got this little panel, which comes with every alpha system and is built onto the inverter, which is this part. And that's actually a removable panel. So we can pull that off like that. And there's a little catch on the side but that opens up like this, which reveals a load of cool connections. So I'll take you through now what these connections are and what they do. So the first one, as you can see here, it says BAT. This is a battery isolation switch. So no matter how many modules we have on this system, this isolator here will isolate them from the inverter if we need to shut down the system replace a battery module, add some more battery modules, whatever. That is our point of isolation for the batteries themselves. We've then got this really neat little PV isolator. So this system that we've installed at this job is uh, what's called a hybrid system. It's kind of a hybrid and DC coupled system. So what we've got is we've got this isolator here will isolate our new solar going directly through this battery system. So that means we can isolate that and the solar is no longer feeding into this system. So then we've got this backup switch um, it's off at the minute and, and what this basically is it's a UPS system so this will switch over in 0.2 of a second and will be up to uh, 3.68 kilowatts of off-grid power if you like so if you have a power cut we can reroute cabling through a separate little consumer unit that is fed from this breaker here to stay on in the event of a power cut so normally this is your internet your freezer your uh, TV, your lights, things like that, that, that aren't massively high using piece of equipment, but would make a power cut a lot more tolerable. So that is UPS, so it's not used on this job, but it's already built in. So if the customer decided that they wanted it, they don't have to buy any more kit. We just have to move some of the circuits into a new little distribution board. The next part is this grid isolation switch. So this is a little bit like the AC isolator that I showed you before. This will isolate the incoming supply from the grid, as it mentions. So that again, just provides us local isolation so that we know the inverter is completely disconnected from the grid once we turn that isolator off. We've then got various data and metering connections here, which all make this system work. So that is everything in this little panel, but you can see it's all nice and neat. There's no exposed cables. Um, it just makes for a really good solid system. So the last part and probably one of the most important parts of this battery system is the battery cell itself and that is here. So that is made up of loads of little cells really, it's more of a battery module. So within there we've got 5.5 kilowatt hours of usable storage, it's around 5.7 kilowatt hours of total storage but there's a depth of discharge on this that allows 5.5 usable. So you can have a load of these modules and this customer has actually ordered an extra two of these. So that'll take his usable storage to 16 and a half kilowatt hours which is a really, really healthy amount of power. And one of the reasons why he's doing that is because he's got loads of solar now, so he can have more stored power. 
but also he can charge these up overnight on a cheap electricity rate. So take winter for example where solar on any property is going to be reduced because of the winter season, the back end of the year season. So this customer's got an EV, he's on an EV tariff which means that overnight he's only maybe paying five, six pence per kilowatt hour. You can actually schedule this battery to charge up and charge up from the grid on that cheap power which means that yes you are still buying power but it's only at 6p rather than nowadays maybe 25 26p which is a really really good saving and, and makes this battery worthwhile having every day of the year really because you're not totally reliant on that solar pv power so yes there'll be another video incoming of that but as it stands, it's a really nice, tidy little unit. So we'll have a look at the screen now, and I'll show you a few simple things that the screen shows us that allows us to check that everything's okay and see what's happening real time in the system. So this is the Alpha app. It's a really clear app, and it shows the customer what the solar is generating, what's happening with the grid, if they're importing or exporting power, what the state of charge of the battery is, if the battery is charging, discharging, how much the battery is charging, discharging, what your home is consuming. And it puts all of that onto a really clear and easy to read display, which is a little bit rare when it comes to these sort of systems, because sometimes these systems bombard people with a lot of information that I, as an electrician, as a bit of a, a renewables nerd as well, really love to see. But as a, an end user, there is a limit as to what you actually need to see. We register every system that we install, we register on as one of our installs. So that means that if you find that there's a problem, we can actually log into it remotely. But let's get into the app and I'll show you what we've got. So on the top left, we've got a little solar panel and that is showing us at the minute that we're generating 1.582 kilowatts, so 1,582 watts. At the minute we're buying in about 13 watts from the grid so sometimes we get a little bit of an overlap where the battery needs to do all its calculations react and so sometimes there's a little bit of power being bought in a little bit of power being exported back to the grid but it's not usually that much it's just as the battery reacts to the ever-changing solar generation and the load in the house we've then got at the bottom left we've got the battery so we've got at the minute the arrows are pointing towards the battery which means the battery is charging and we can see just under the word battery we've got 962 watts so it's changing all the time but around that is what we're putting into the battery itself the battery state of charge which is under that middle picture is 78 percent so this battery is 78 percent charged and we can also see on the little battery symbol how charged that is with regards to the little bars the bottom right we can see the load so we can see at the minute this home is using 580 watt watts of power what would be really cool timing now is if the customer put the kettle on or something like that and it jumped up to a couple of kilowatt but yeah we, we might see that if, if they do next if we go down to this next bar is we've got self-consumption so we can see here that out of everything that this system is generated through the solar through the new and the old solar this customer is using about 87.2 percent of that solar power so that means that his solar pv generator today has produced 9.4 kilowatt hours and he's exported 1.2 back to the grid self-sufficiency so this is how reliant on the grid this customer is really which is the next bar down he's 34.5 percent reliant on the grid so that means that his home has bought in 15.6 kilowatt hours and he's totally consumed whether or not it's come from the grid or the solar or the battery 23.8 kilowatt hours today now that'll be a little bit the car charger and the SOS heat pump because they might come in overnight when this battery might have discharged all of its power hence why this customer is upgrading to a larger system Bottom row is profit, so how much the customer has benefited from having this system put in. We've only installed this a week or so ago, uh, but the customer has put in their rate for their energy and things like that. So it'll show us how much the customer has earned or saved having this system, but also the amount of CO2 that they've um, saved and also the amount of trees that they've planted. If we quickly go through some of these figures, we've got the power tab, which shows us the state of charge of the battery, the amount of household load, the solar PV production, the feed in, how much power's gone back to the grid, and the total grid consumption. That is all put onto a graph and we can change by pressing this arrow up here, the day. So we can move along the different days to see what it's done on, on different days. And we can see that as well, like this is our company iPad. We can go onto that and have a look and see what's been happening. If we were only interested in what the solar had been doing, we can press these little icons at the bottom and just leave the solar one. And now we can see 
without any other information what the solar has produced over the day that we selected. If we then overlaid that with the amount of how that's affected the battery state of charge, we can put the battery back in and then we can see how that's affected if the battery is charging or discharging. This customer looks to have a overnight charge which kicks in at about two o'clock-ish which we can see at this bottom corner here. And then that sharply rises to 100% and then starts to discharge during the morning until the solar kicks in. But that's a really easy tab to look at. And this is all available on the desktop as well, which actually then gives you even more information as to the exact amount of power that has been charged, discharged, the state of charge at individual minutes during the day. So you can really take this as much as you like. So now we're on to the statistics page and we've got the amount of solar production, the amount of home consumption, the feed-in, and the amount of bought-in grid power uh, over a series of days. And again, we can change that range depending on what we want to see. So if we click on any of these, we can then see, okay, so on the 8th, the home used 20 kilowatt hours, it fed 13.2 back to the grid, and it produced 27.2, and it bought in six. So we can really quickly go across and see what's been happening across a series of days. And if there's a day where the customer thinks something was wrong, we can go straight to that day and see how the system was working. And we can change that based on day, month, year, or since the system was installed. So since installation, we can see that solar has produced 312.7 kilowatt hours. The home has consumed 535, the fed back 66, and the bought in 286. Those extra couple of battery modules that will be in another video will really help to reduce that grid consumption, how much they're buying in because there's more power being able to be stored. So if we move to the profit section, this is individual to everyone really, um, and shows the total amount that this system has saved the customer, which is really good for keeping a track because it's difficult to work that out sometimes, but this app has got all that built in. And then settings. So here the customer can change when the battery starts to charge up from the grid if they've got that function so if they've got a cheap overnight rate this system can be programmed to start charging at a certain time and stop charging at a certain time and that can all be controlled from the app so you can do that on your sofa in bed whatever you want uh, which is really handy if you don't have to come out here and do it as well we can set that as well so if the customer was a bit unsure we can do that for them as long as we know their times that's basically the app um, it's really clear it shows us all the information that we need as engineers and the customer needs as a customer and as an end user uh, without overcomplicating things and making it a, a laborious task to actually check what's happening. So yeah, really impressed with that app. So that is the Alpha system in place and I've taken you through all the different components that this system has to make it all work really. And I think you'll agree it's a really solid system. There's different ways that this system could be connected so there's three different ways. So there's AC coupled, hybrid, and DC coupled. So AC coupled means that there is existing solar or you've installed solar, but it's not going directly through the battery. So for example, if we hadn't added any extra solar to this system and just connected it to monitor the existing solar, that would be an AC coupled system. We've then got a hybrid system. The hybrid system means that it's got solar coming through it, which means that the battery inverter actually acts as a battery and the solar inverter. So if we didn't have the existing solar and we just put a new solar PV system in with this battery storage system, that would be classed as a hybrid system because the inverter that's built into here is, is doubling up as a battery and a solar inverter. That's really cool though, because it means that if you're tight for room or tight on budget, then you're not paying for two inverters, two lots of installation, two lots of isolators and, and cabling and everything like that. It's, and it's all in one nice neat box, uh, which really helps. The DC coupled is a bit more complicated. So that means that we've got existing solar and we've got solar going through the battery. So that's basically what we've got here, really. We've got a hybrid slash DC coupled system as we've got existing solar and we've got solar going through the battery system itself. These are a really great unit because it comes as standard. So for example, if you installed an AC coupled system and in a year, two years time, you decide actually I'm gonna get some more panels because I've got an electric car or I've got a, an air source heat pump and I need more panels. Or if you just saved up a bit more, we can actually just connect more panels into this system and you don't have to buy a new inverter or anything. All you've got to do is buy the panels, the rail, the installation obviously has to be through an MCS company, but everything's there already. And so it's just literally a case of pu putting panels into it and changing the, the mode of the battery. I think that's really cool because it, if you've got to choose A, B or C at the point of buying it, 
you don't know what your situation is going to be like in two years, three years, four years, five years, ten years time, but you know that if you get one of these systems, it's all built inside it already, so it takes the worry out of it. A bit like the UPS mode that's built in. That's already there, you know, 90% of people might not ever use it, but it's there so that you can use it if you ever need it. So that is the Alpha ESS system, and I think it's a pretty cool system. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video and you can see how we can integrate new and old solar PV systems together, along with a really solid and robust battery storage system in what is quite a neat and tidy area and tidy box and obviously a nice neat and tidy installation like we always do. This is a testament as to how far the technology has come and how far it's going to go over the next 10 years. Battery storage systems are here, they're not going anywhere and so more and more people are going to look to get battery storage systems and we think the Alpha is a really really good solution to that. So if you sat there thinking that's great Sam, I love the look of the battery, what a great install, hopefully you're thinking that anyway. But I don't have space in my garage, I don't have space in my utility, I've only got space in my loft or outside, then we're not going to put one of these in your loft unfortunately, uh, not unless you've got a reinforced loft with very good ventilation uh, because they are very heavy systems and they do need to be floor mounted but we can do something about the outside option. So with that battery you've just seen, they do an IP65 version, which basically means it can go outside, which is great because quite a lot of battery systems don't have that facility. So if you've not got room in your house and we can't put it in the loft, then outside is a really good option. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's shown that we can integrate old and new solar PV systems with a battery storage system in what is quite a neat and tidy way you haven't got these massive great boxes that are sat next to you in your living room or anything like that. They're tucked away, they're nice and neat. Obviously with a nice and neat install as well, the cabling's all hidden and it just works really well. Batteries are here to stay. They're only gonna develop even more, but we feel that the Alpha is such a great solution. If you have any questions on this system, any of the other systems that we've done, please feel free to drop us a message, an email, subscribe to our channel, like and share and all that business. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks very much.